What's up YouTube? Today we're going to cover pernate renal anatomy for percutaneous renal interventions. Hey, my name is Nico Cardenas and we're back with another FIRE video, Fundamentals in IR Education, where we hope to provide efficient, easily accessible content regarding the field of IR. Let's jump into it. Understanding renal anatomy is important in order to perform these procedures safely. Here are some quick points. The kidneys are paired organs in the retroperitoneum. The left kidney is located at the level of T11, T12 to L3. The right kidney is about one to two centimeters lower than the left kidney. And one way to remember that is the liver pushes the right kidney a little more inferiorly. The thoracic pleura attaches to the 10th rib laterally and the 12th ribs posteriorly. This is important because the 12th rib crosses over the superior pole of the right kidney. And since the left kidney is higher than the right kidney, both the 11th and 12th rib cross over the superior pole of the left kidney. Because of this anatomy, percutaneous access of the upper pole of the kidney has a high chance of being transpleural, leading to an increased risk of a pneumothorax. The anatomy of the renal hilum going anterior to posterior is renal vein, renal artery, and renal pelvis. So when you lay the patient prone on the fluoroscopy table, the structure nearest the skin will be the renal pelvis. And although it may be tempting to directly puncture into the collecting system, this will most certainly lead to a urine leak. So it's always advised to go through normal renal parenchyma before accessing the collecting system. So you have the patient prone on the fluoroscopy table and you're about to do an ultrasound to evaluate the anatomy, the degree of hydronephrosis, and to plan your approach. A number that you want to keep in mind is 10 centimeters. You want to be 10 centimeters lateral to midline. And this is a ballpark number and obviously it will range from patient to patient. But if, if you access too medial, you risk dilating through paraspinal muscles, which is not ideal but sometimes needs to be done. If you go too lateral, you risk perforating the colon. Occasionally, the colon is located lateral to the kidney, and very rarely is it located posterior to the kidney. That's why it's very important to review prior imaging if available, and to do an ultrasound prior to proceeding to get a lay of the land. When thinking about renal anatomy, you can divide the kidney up into anterior and posterior segments. The renal artery and vein enter the kidney at the renal hilum and separate into the larger anterior branches and the smaller posterior branches. The same thing can be said about the collecting system. You have anterior calyces and you have posterior calyces. In between the anterior and posterior vascular territories, you have a relatively avascular plane known as Bradle's line, which is along the posterior lateral aspect of the kidney. Gaining access through this line theoretically decreases the risk of bleeding complications. The specific site for renal entry will be dictated by the indication for the procedure. For simple urinary drainage, a lower pole posterior calyx is preferred because it's the easiest to access and it's always caudal to the 12th rib. When the indication for access is nephrolithotomy, which is the percutaneous removal of stones usually performed by urology, the access site is dictated by stone location and complexity. For simple stones, access to the stone-bearing calyx is preferred. For complex stones, access to an upper pole posterior calyx is preferred despite its increased risk of a pneumothorax because it provides the readiest access to all parts of the collecting system. To wrap this video up, here are the major take-home points. Understanding renal anatomy is important in order to perform these procedures safely. A posterior lateral approach to a lower pole posterior calyx is ideal for the following reasons. It's subcostal, so you decrease the risk of a pneumothorax. You access along Bradle's avascular line, decreasing the risk of hemorrhagic complications. And the angle of entry into the renal pelvis from a lower pole posterior calyx is less acute. There are situations when a lower pole posterior calyx is not ideal. When the indication is for nephrolithotomy, access site is dictated by stone location and complexity. Thanks for watching. 
If you found this video helpful, feel free to hit the subscribe button below. Stay tuned for more videos.